With us is Bryce Salato, a former Army National Guard specialist, joining us in Washington. Bryce, I want you to tell us a little bit more about what you think can be done from now going forward. We've heard lots of calls for rallies, for protests, people slamming this decision, putting up the numbers. Where does this go from here? Well, I think the, the biggest thing that I, I want to point out first is that, you know, Donald Trump's tweets yesterday, while alarming and while terrible, are not yet policy. Um, as you stated earlier, the Joint Chiefs of Staff has said that for now, the policy is going to remain, remain the same until Secretary Mattis has the final say. So I think with that being said, the, the biggest thing you can do if you are an ally or a supporter of transgender people is just reach out to those people in your life. Reach out to the transgender folks you know even if they're not in the military, because um, let's be clear, this is an attack on all transgender people, not just those serving in the military. So if you are friends with transgender people or even just know someone, you know, send them messages on Facebook, call them, text them, let them know you're there and you care about them. And in terms of, you know, what the 10,000 to 15,000 currently serving transgender troops are going to keep doing, you know, we're going to keep doing our jobs. Um, all my friends who are still on active duty showed up this morning. They showed up to do their job as drill sergeants, as pilots, as you know, senior leaders in the United States military. So that's the biggest thing for us moving forward as troops, as, as soldiers, as sailors, as Marines. We're going to keep doing our job and keep Bryce, serving this country. Let me just ask you uh, quickly, what message do you have? If you'd like to send a message to President Trump on this issue, what would you say? If I had a chance to talk to President Trump on regarding this issue, I would tell him first and foremost that, you know, we, we being transgender military members, all volunteer to put our lives in the line for this country. You know, we signed up, we took an oath, we took a pledge, and that we are out there and that we are human. And, you know, President Trump did not serve his country, and I, I think that's really important to point out. We had, he's, a, he's a president who not only did not serve, but he also actively dodged the draft multiple times during um, the Vietnam War. So, you know, I would tell him that we, we serve, you know, we serve, and we are here, and we're human. And I think that's the number one thing here is that too often it's easy for people to dehumanize transgender people or not see us as humans. And that's the number one message that I want to send to the president and everyone else who may support his view on this. Bryce Salato in Washington, thank you very much for being with us and for sharing your story. I want to come back to Ophira Mitai. She was the first army official in charge of transgender issues in the Israeli military. Ophir, you mentioned a little bit uh, when we spoke earlier about the costs. This is one of the things that President Trump has said in, in the U.S. military, that it's expensive, that it's a burden. What is your experience from the Israeli military? What I know is the cost of requiring transgender soldier isn't different than any other soldiers. For example, I have asthma. I have a severe asthma, and I, I got from the army. I was provided the inhalers and treatments that are very expensive, and never nobody says that I should be discharged because of that. And I think it should be looked at the same, the same way. Right, and we see some of those costs up there, according to a 2016 study in the U.S., looking that actually the cost of transgender health care is a very, very small fraction. If you're sort of looking forward for the Israeli military, do you think that the IDF is on the path to making this issue even easier for transgender troops? In Israel it's a bit different because the, the military health care is very similar to the civilian health care system because of the, the law that everyone has to join the army so right. it's, it's a bit different in the IDF but I know that every transgender gets whatever he needs and in, in, in the IDF I know it's not an issue. Do you find that attitudes change along with military decisions? I think from my experience that transgender soldiers are more likely to be highly motivated not just to serve but to succeed and once they cope and they they go beyond the obstacles I think that they make it the best soldiers there are so well, end with that very important message to be heard, especially at this moment in time. Ophira Mitai, thank you thank very you. much for thank being you. here. That's it for us.